welcome to the one more session of uh, ARM. In this session, uh, you are going to learn interrupts or exception. As I told in my previous video, the ARM7 makes use of uh, uh, seven interrupts and uh, uh, each uh, seven modes. That means ARM7 works in seven different operating modes there are seven interrupts and these seven interrupt takes you to five different operating modes because the two other modes do not want any interrupt so now what are those modes so what are those seven operating modes let me write here the seven operating modes are the seven different operating modes are one is supervisor one is supervisor second one is a user mode third one is a system mode third one is a system mode fourth one is a IRQ mode Fifth one is a fast interrupt request FIQ mode. Sixth one is a undefined mode. And seventh one is a abort mode. So both undefined and abort are error modes, error reporting modes. So 90% of the time your ARM7 uh, processor or your like uh, like your mobile system will be in the user mode. So from user mode to invoke the user mode you don't need any you don't need any interrupt. For example when you restart your system restart your system or like mobile phone or ARM7 based processor first it goes into supervisor mode and it will load the operating system. Once the operating system is loaded it will take you into the user mode and 90% of this time it will remain in the user mode so if you invoke system related function it will go to system mode, system mode so to go to user mode and system mode it don't need any type of interrupt so other than that uh, to go to supervisor mode IRQ mode FIQ mode undefined mode about mode it need interrupts okay now so the seven interrupts are reset undefined instruction software interrupt prefetch about data about and uh, IRQ and FIQ. One more is reserved for to give the compatibility with the previous version of uh, uh, ARM7. So a reset interrupt will take you to the uh, like uh, supervisor mode and undefined will take you to the undefined mode. Uh, software interrupt will uh, like it is a shortened uh, representation here yeah, it is it will take you to the, the supervisor mode free patch about and data about it will take you to the about mode then interrupt request it will take you to the IRQ mode and fast interrupt request it will take you to FIQ mode these are the address of the ISR routine so uh, all interrupts in ARM7 are vector based interrupt vector based interrupt means all interrupt has got fixed address so here this is the lower address and it is higher address. These address will be set based on the position of a ROM and RAM in the uh, in ARM based system. We will come to that later. So let me make one second clear about this the relationship between this uh, interrupt and uh, uh, different modes. You know there are seven interrupts, but the seven interrupt take you to five different modes. So reset and uh, software interrupt it will take you to supervisor mode. Other than that, und uh, undefined will take you to undefined mode. There is a, a mode called as undefined. Other than that, free patch and data about it will take you to about mode. IRQ will take you to IRQ mode and FIQ will take you to FIQ mode. You have to remember here both user and uh, system mode doesn't require or invoked with the any type of interrupt so let's start with the first reset mode what is the reset mode so normally a re ARM7 there is a ARM7 treat reset as a interrupt normally other processor treat reset as a signal 
so when you reset your mobile phone or ARM processor first it will uh, invoke the program called as a BIOS BIOS is stored in a ROM the program called as a BIOS BIOS is nothing basic input output system that will take around 30 to 40 seconds uh, and it will load the operating system from the primary memory sorry from the secondary memory to the primary memory and uh, after that it will initialize the various uh, settings in the operating system and it, then after that control will be uh, passed to the user and that mode is called as a user mode so to load the operating system it needs highest privilege so uh, of course that makes you to uh, makes your system to be in uh, supervisor mode understood so reset uh, takes you to the supervisor mode one more is a software interrupt so suppose you want to execute uh, certain important related functions like you want to install certain app uh, app that requires more privilege so installing app in a sense like you are going to select the app from the uh, app store and you will uh, you will hit the install button that will make changes in the root of the system root of the operating system uh, that need some uh, supervisor privilege for that you need to call software interrupt instruction sw instruction sw instruction followed by number that will take you to from a user mode to supervisor mode where it will do the necessary changes once the installation is done it will uh, once again uh, once the installation is done you will uh, you will come to normal mode that is user mode other than that we have one more mode that is called as undefined instruction that will take you to undefined mode when there is a undefined instruction that opcode cannot be analyzed by arm7 then it will take you to undefined mode where uh, it will uh, it will kill the application and it uh, and you will be taken back to original user mode that is called undefined mode then we have uh, two mode that is uh, something called as a prefetch abort and data abort so prefetch abort and data abort is a uh, you are as a user you ha have got access to the user program and user data suppose if you want to try to make access to the system program or system data then it will take you to abort mode suppose you are going to access system program that is you are uh, accessing system program means the pre-patching instruction then uh, it is called a pre-patch abort uh, and uh, uh, doing the pre-patch abort it will take you to pre-patch abort mode where it will kill the application and it will take you to back to the original mode that is user mode when you are going to access system data then it will take you to the abort mode that is called data abort mode uh, where it will kill the application and it will take you back to the original mode called user mode that is called as a data abort mode other than that we have something called as irq mode and faq mode irq mode means uh, in, in ARM7 there are two pins uh, like one is uh, interrupt uh, request pin and wash interrupt request pin. Uh, if there is an interrupt request or interrupt request pin then it will take you to IRQ mode and if there is a fast interrupt request then it will take you to fast interrupt request mode. Fast interrupt request modes are faster because it has got a separate set of registers uh, which doesn't require of uh, uh, copying uh, register related information to stack when it moves to ISR. So now we will see this this column. What is this column? This column is nothing but the address. So whenever there is a, whenever the interrupt comes, sir, you know. Whenever the interrupt comes, sir, this is the procedure. Whenever the interrupt comes, sir, it goes to. Whenever the interrupt in ARM process, ARM process, whenever the interrupt comes, sir, it goes to. ISR. It goes to ISR, execute the ISR and it will return back from that to the uh, uh, this one to the next instruction has to be executed. So this ISR has, has got in ARM7 this ISR has got fixed address. So if the ISR has got fixed address such type of ISR are called as a vector interrupt. In ARM7 all the ISR all the interrupts are vectored interrupt. Now we have to see when the interrupt request comes, it will go to ISR. That time, what changes, uh, what pre request or what changes uh, uh, has to be taken in the register? First of all, when before going to ISR, when the interrupt comes, uh, before going to ISR, CPSR has to be copied to SPSR. 
we know what is a CPSR. CPSR is nothing but a current program status register which we want when we return back from the ISR. So that has to be copied to SPSR. SPSR is nothing but a stored program status register. So current program status registers contains flag information, then uh, uh, mode informations and uh, uh, IRK information and FIK information. All these informations will be copied into SPSR. Then second, after that, uh, mode bit needs to be changed. So once after copying CPSR to SPSR, mode bits needs to be changed depending on the different types of mode and interrupt. After that, it need to activate new set of register. You know when it moves from, when it gets interrupted and it moves to the ISR, it will jump to different operating mode. In different operating mode, it will have different set of register. We know link register, then SPSR register, then uh, stack pointer register. It will get new set of register. All these new set of register has to be activated. Then make uh, the T bit in uh, CPSR to be zero. What is what is the meaning of uh, T bit? What is the meaning of T bit? We know T bit indicates a thumb state. If the T bit is 1, so if the T bit is 1, the processor is in thumb state. If the T bit is 0, the processor in a normal state. In thumb state, the processor will execute 16 bit instruction. In the normal state, the processor will execute 32 bit instruction. Now, as an ARM, ARM7, it, will, it may execute 16 bit or 32 bit instructions. Uh, norm, uh, like, uh, it may execute 32 bit instruction uh, when uh, in the normal stage, normal stage, and uh, depending on the situation, it may execute 16 bit instruction. But whenever ISR comes, uh, we assume ISR in ISR all the instructions will be in uh, will be in uh, normal state. So normal state so you need to do the changes to the thumb bit uh, zero thumb bit zero means uh, 32 bit uh, once again i will repeat why you are going to make thumb bit zero because you need to assume that in isr inside the isr all the instructions are in 32 bit it is not in a 16 bit after that uh, Program counter will be copied, the address of the program counter, like the current address of the program counter will be copied to link register. Now the program counter is loaded with the ISR address. The program counter will be loaded with the ISR address. After execution of the ISR, the reverse process will take place. You can see here the reverse process. These are the reverse process. What is the reverse process? The reverse process is a SPSR will be copied to CPSR so that uh, your original flag information as soon as when it returns from the ISR your original flag information will be retrieved then return address from the LR link register will be copied to the program counter now the program counter has got the next address uh, like address of the next instruction to be executed then when it returns to the original uh, like original store uh, state like user mode you need to reactivate the previous registers this process will take place once it returns from the isr now here you know these are the so students there are two type of address lower address and higher address these addresses are given to the isr routine isr routine and uh, this is a fixed address that's why the isr routines are called as a vectored address a vectored interrupt like those root uh, isr routine contains fixed address for example when the reset interrupt comes uh, then control will be taken into this address this address like 0000, 0, 0, 0. The next address will be 0004. The next address will be 008. There will be a gap of uh, 4 bytes. Now the question comes, why the gap of 4 bytes? Or within 4 bytes, can you write the entire ISR? Now you think like the ISR program of uh, uh, bootloader, it will be more than 4 bytes. You cannot exactly predict the program size in the sense like uh, it may be, uh, it will be very big and it depends on the program. That's why, so ISR is not written here. Here, 
here it is here it contains the address of the isr so isr will be somewhere else in the memory so here it will be the address of the isr so when the reset interrupt comes the control will be transferred to here and from here it will take one more branch instruction to jump to the isr address so now that branch instruction size you know all the arm instructions are four bytes that's why the, the that's why this four bytes gap is there like whenever interrupt comes it will come to this address and this address contains one more branch instruction that will take you to the isr similarly whenever the interrupt request uh, pass interrupt request comes it will come to this address and from here it will move to the isr so this address contains the address of the isr address of the isr not isr routine so we have two address here lower address and higher address so lower address and higher address you can either use lower address or higher address depending on the rom whether your rom is placed with the higher address or rom is placed with the lower address you know there are two types of uh, memory ram and rom ram is called as volatile and rom is called as a non volatile non volatile in the sense like ad, uh, information will be saved in the in the case of a power loss so isr routine should be in the memory sorry isr routine should be in the rom so depending on the placement of the rom in your board you can take uh, either lower address or higher address so this is the information related to the interrupt in the uh, ARM7, how the interrupt will be handled in ARM7. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you.